I'm Danielle McCartan here with John Wetland. Everybody that's a Yankee fan knows who he is. He's a three-time All-Star, 1996 AL Saves Leader, and a 1996 World Series MVP. Uh, we're here at a Mint Pros and J. Irwin Productions event. What is it like to be at an event like this in, uh, with these fans, talking oh, to these fans? It's always wonderful to come back. And um, anytime I'm asked back now, now that I can physically do it, um, you know, I try and do because, you know, they're the best fans in the world, bar none. Um, it's amazing to me to see how much, the, you know, if you're a winner here, that's it. I mean, they remember you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that's very special to us as players. So the 20th anniversary of the Yankee 96 team was held this year at the stadium. What was it like to come back here with the guys again for an event like that? <laughs> We, we all picked up right where we left off. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, especially when we were standing in the tunnel waiting to be introduced, you yeah. know, it took forever. It took like a half hour, and we were just in full-blown 96 mode. It was hysterical. You know, Jimmy Key and Wade Boggs going at it each other, and um, all kinds of other stuff like that. But we had fun as a team, and, and uh, respected each other's work, and respected where we played. And so, um, you know, a special time again. We didn't skip a beat. Very cool. So you were uh, part of the '95 team, and again in '96. What was the difference between? I know you had a little bit with Buck Showalter, but what was the biggest difference between Showalter's Yankees and Tory's Yankees in terms of climate, team climate? Um, Tory was very easy going. You know, Joe has a kind of has a spirit about him that you know you, you just you want to please him, and other people kind of want to be a little more forceful uh, to you um, and you can kind of see through when they're trying to massage something that they're really aiming for something else. But Joe Torrey brought a calmness to us, the young guys and the veterans felt the exact same way, he never made anyone feel out of place, he didn't try and over manage or micromanage, you know, he, he, he said this is how I am, just be like that and you're going to be fine and we did it. Well, it shows. The results have yeah. shown, right? So now you had four dominant saves in the World Series, the 96 World Series. Is there one that is more important or resonates stronger now? Well, the last one, you know, because, I mean, the, the Andy Pettit save was, was probably the, the toughest one mm -hmm. because you come in with a man on third and one out. You can't afford to give up a fly ball, and I'm a fly ball pitcher. Right. And so that was an interesting mound conference because Jim Leyritz came out and I called Charlie Hazen for third. And I said, Javi Lopez is at the plate. And he was a tremendous fastball hitter. Um, didn't matter how hard he threw. And so I said, I'm starting him off with a slider. He's gonna, he's gonna pull it to you, Charlie. And he'll probably hit a ground ball. Well, he, he smoked it pretty good, but it went exactly at Charlie. So we were able to hold the runner and then get the third out with O'Neill's great play. Um, but the last one, you know, by then your your body's so beat up, and from regular season and yeah. postseason, you know, because I pitched a lot during the postseason, yeah. and um, just trying to get through that, and I was nervous too. Yeah. It was the only time during the postseason I was nervous because I knew, and a lot of us kind of had this feeling we talked about it later that if we didn't win six, we wouldn't have won seven. Yeah, you know, I talked to Andy Pettit about that. He said the same thing, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, a lot of us felt that way. Yeah, so now, um, Laird's his home run. What was the first thought that came through your mind? Well, I had a front row seat. Yeah, we seriously. were right out there, you I know. know. We, had the, we had the arc angle of it, so we could see, you know, this thing's going to make it. Yeah. Because it kind of looked like with the swing, uh -huh. it was just going to kind of hit a high, hit off the top high of ball. The and I was like, oh my gosh, you know. But the comeback, I think we were down five to nothing in that game at one point. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we chipped away, and Leverett's coming up with the big three runner, and um, you know, a lot of kind of improbable things happened in that season. And I think that that at bat kind of summed up, you know, what we were about the whole year. Yeah. You think about it, and you look at Baltimore that year, and you look at. Um, there are a couple other teams that just on paper just smoked us, yeah. you know, but somehow we always... Pulled it out, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I have to ask you about, um, Mariano Rivera does credit a lot of his success to you. What was it like um, 
mentoring him early on in his career? Well, I mean, he's just beautiful. I mean, he's, he's a beautiful soul, number one, you know. And, um, he's probably one of the most observant people, um, players that I've ever come across. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't such a need to go in depth with him. He was already there. Right. And so I would point something out. He would take notice and you could see him apply it, you know, almost immediately. So you knew that this guy was going to be something special in the bullpen. Right. So we had a question come in through, uh, Mark, his name is Mark Anthony from Yankee World on Facebook. He said, uh, what was he like, what was Mariano like uh, when he was first beginning his career? <laughs> he was really green. <laughs> he was funny almost. <laughs> but it, what wasn't funny is you could see he was struggling, you know, because he kind of came up as a starter and then middle reliever and he kind of went through all the hoops. But again, that, that rise in two years, uh, well, I guess it would be yeah, two years to become a dominant major league closer is really remarkable. Um, usually guys take five, six years at least to, um, to take the ball in the ninth inning. So, um, you know, there was, there was a little of him and me and me and him in that regard. I was given the ball at 25 years old and said, you're our closer, welcome to the big leagues. Yeah. You know, and so I had to learn on the go too. So I looked up your stats as a as a batter career. You, were 100, uh, you batted 167 with one home run and eight RBIs. Now, I've asked all the other guys here that I I, know, I think I already know the answer, but um, the MLB seems to want to in, integrate pitchers into the home run derby. What is your opinion about that? Ooh, I don't like it from a, a physical standpoint at all. We we don't we don't train our bodies to hit every day. Right. These guys' muscles are conditioned to hit because right. me and Charlie Hayes were talking about today. These guys take hundreds of swings a day, some of them, and pitchers don't. And you're asking for some serious rib cage trouble, yeah. you know. Obliques. If, yeah. Core. Yeah. 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 Okay, so then uh, just my final question was that um, you retired at 33, which is fairly young for retirement. Do you feel like you could have gone longer? No. Uh, I couldn't because um, I broke my back throwing a pitch yeah. in 2000. So going through everything and trying to avoid surgery, what ended up happening was surgery, and I went through nine surgeries in the span of 10 years. And so I mean, I knew my career was over after I broke my back. The next morning, I went in and and, and or no, I went I went to the park the next day, just thinking I needed a good day's rest. But I broke several things in my back just throwing the pitch. So finally the body went, and so uh, I told the trainer, th I said, I think I did something bad. So they scheduled me for all the workups the next morning at the hospital. And the, the doctor, who I knew very well, I'm sitting there in a gown in the room, and uh, he comes in, the door just blasts open, you know, and he's got two x-rays in his hands. He jams him up into the, the viewing thing, turns on the light, and he goes, tell me what you say. And why he goes, this is from spring training, and this was his role. I go, well, now, and my first words were, now my career is over. What about my quality of life? So, and since then, it was very difficult, you know, going through those 10, 11, 12 years. But um, now it's kind of evened out a little bit, and, and I'm doing okay. All right, well, Daniel McCartan here with John Wetland, and uh, we're uh, enjoying Great Yankee game. I think the Yankees are up 5 to 1 the last I looked. Oh, good. I good, think good. so. I haven't been able to see the game <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, enjoy the game. Hopefully, you get a, get a good look at it. And thank you very much. It was a pleasure.